The 2009 edition of the Clarington Greengales have some pretty lofty expectations. The rookie-laden team that has had great success in the regular season is now a year older and have learned from their second-round playoff loss what it takes to get the job, job done at the top level. As Juraj Vojcic reports, this season's team will have to live up to those expectations and handle the pressure that comes along with it. A couple of weeks, a couple of weeks ago, we are like, you know, we want to win the Founders. It would be nice. We want to win it. Next year, we expect to win it. Those were the words of Gales coach Jason Crosby following last season's second round loss to Halton Hills. As another season approaches, Crosby is still insisting he expects nothing but championship aspiration from his team. That's the reality of it. This is a organization that prides itself on winning. So that's the first and foremost uh, expectation right now is to win a Founders Cup. And uh, that'll never change while I'm here, for sure. I think as a Green Gale, there's always pressure on you. The Green Gales are always expected to win. So yes, there is pressure, uh, maybe more so this year than, uh, than it was, say, last year. The Gales lost only two players to graduation. However, it's expected the Whitby Warriors will claim at least a few for their roster. All said, the team expects to fill six to eight roster spots. In goal, Zach Higgins will be the number one goaltender. He's currently at Davenport College in Michigan and won't be back in time for the start of the season. So Matt Shamwa will be the backup once Higgins returns. This Gales team is still young, but have enough veteran leadership to see them through tough times. Well, I think we're going to have to rely heavily on some of our veterans to lead the way. Uh, we, we do have uh, some really good veterans like Johnny LaFontaine and uh, Steve Borden and Shane Jackson. These guys we're going to rely on to uh, show the younger guys what it's like to be a Green Gale. And um, I have complete confidence that they will uh, lead by example and uh, take us to the promised land. The reality of the fact that to win a Founders you need experience and that's what we are lacking and that's ultimately what happened to us in the playoffs is that that lack of experience was the one thing that hurt us. Um, this year is a different story. The Gales finished at the top of their division last year. Now goal scoring wasn't an issue in most games, however a lack of scoring did hurt them in their three playoff losses to the Bulldogs. Crosby says the focus of the Gales has always been on team defense and this season won't be any different. We pride ourselves on being a very defensive team. Uh, you know, uh, we start at our own end, make sure our own end's clean, and then move out from there. You know, there's a ton of offensive talent. There's a, uh, you know, some really good transition here. I'm really going to be pushing the ball this year, really making sure that we're doing the right thing this year. So everyone's been working out in the off season. You know, we. It's defensive knowledge, like Cross is back there on the bench with us, coaching us well on the D, and you know, we got. Uh, a lot of talent back there and we have a lot evenly out throughout the team and I hope that our defense can play as tough and as strong as last year. Opening night for the Gales is Thursday, April 23rd at home against the Markham Ironheads. In Clarington, Juraj Vujic, First Local Sports. First half action, Kristen Papadako is controlling the ball around the net, makes a break for it, scores, reducing the Gators' lead 3-2. Jacqueline Boisenau breaks through the defense, goes bottom left corner, and now we're all tied up at three. Ashley Brooker splitting the defense, going all the way for the solo effort, and the Gators begin to control this one. The Raiders, however, would not let them phase them as the ball is thrown to Aaron Nichols, who finds the back of the net with the quick release on that one. Team Ontario representative Carly McKenna Kendrick with some nice moves here as she beats the defender. She also scores. She makes that one look easy. Wilson with some nice ball movement though as Aaron Abbott capitalizes in this back and forth matchup. And it would be Abbott again, but this time she sends a tricky bouncer off the field and somehow beats Anderson netminer Katie Holden. This one ends with Donald A. Wilson defeating Anderson by a score of 10 to 7. Juraj Vojcic has the post game. The Anderson Raiders and the Donald A. Wilson Gators faced off today, and it was anyone's guess who would come out on top. The old Adage Defense Wins Championships came true, resulting in a nitty-gritty but fast-paced battle through the course of the match. You know, I don't know that it was the best game played ever. There were a lot of missed passes and a lot of loose ground, a lot of battles on the ground for ground balls. So, you know, I think both of us, from both, both sides of it as coaches, would like to see our girls passing and catching a little better. Our defense is huge. We've been working on defense at practice. Every time we practice, our defense we're trying to perfect it. That game, we pretty much stepped it up. We had to. They had big offensive players, so defense was key. Although the Raiders do deserve praise for never giving up, the Gators successfully passed their test today, and even though they lost to St. Clair last week, they showed that they do have what it takes to compete for a Founders Cup. In Oshawa, Juraj Vujic, First Local Sports.
With under a week to go until the loss of finals, track and field athletes got a good taste of their competition at the Paul Dwyer Invitational today. Athletes from all over the Durham region traveled to North Oshawa, where events ranged from the steeplechase to the javelin to the 4x100 relay. Now, one may think that the athletes would take it easy to prepare for next week's final, but as Juraj Wojcic reports, the competitive spirit was higher than ever. The Dwyer Track and Field Invitational was a huge success with athletes testing their levels of preparatory for the loss of finals. We caught up with convener Kevin Dillon who informed us on the high level of quality at the meet. Certainly in terms of loss, we've got a lot of really good runners here. The, junior, the Senior Boys 8 that's going off in a couple of minutes is really quite strong. The senior Boys Mile is very strong too. And uh, you know, we're one of, one of the hot beds really in the province for hurdlers, so you'll see some very strong hurdlers. I know Senior Girls has a number of strong hurdlers. And uh, so, you know, you do get some athletes that are among the best in the province and the best in the country. Brandon Nunez de Souza, who dominated the Midget Boys 800 meter race and was first from the beginning of the race, says that this meet is no different than the loss of finals. Yeah, because you have to train hard every time. You know, uh, it's all about putting in the work because then it'll pay off in a race. Ryan Charlton, who also dominated his race coming in first in the Senior Boys 800 meter, agreed with Brandon and said that every race in the season is beneficial. Coming into a race like this, do you train as hard as you would and compete as hard as you would in like the lost finals, for example? Yeah, for sure, because every race counts and you want to <clears throat> race at your best every race to get prepared for those races like Lhasa and Offsa. So you train hard the whole year and you just work your best for every race, give it your all. Senyo Agbeaka of Curtis, who came in fourth in the Senior Boys 100 meter, also shared with us some key points and showed that maybe it shouldn't always be about winning. It's a pretty good race. It was in the fast heat. That did all right. You know, it was pretty tough at first, but then I got through it. All in all, as I found out from the athletes and convener Kevin Dillon, it was a great day to show off their skills and have some fun as well. George Wojcic, First Local Sports, Oshawa. Rugby is one of the few sports in the high school calendar that sees the boys and the girls teams compete at the same time. At O'Neill High School, that represents a big shot at glory as both teams have strong programs. As Juraj Wojcic reports, the girls are hoping to get over the hump at Offsa this season. The O'Neill senior girls rugby team is already well into the season with a commanding 4-0 record after their newest 37-0 win against All Saints last night. As the team continues to practice persistently, co-coach Jennifer Moore says they're hopeful they can win Lhasa. We've got great depth on our team. We've got awesome forwards that are really getting the ball around. The backs are fast, quick, and again, we've got depth and they know how to score. This year, there's a bit of new flavor as there's not only a senior program, but a junior one as well. Marianne Dixon shared with us one of the keys to success with O'Neill's rugby prominence. Uh, great communication. We have a wonderful coaching staff. There's Miss Moore and Miss Manorowski. Great communication and uh, leadership as well with the girls. There's some really great leadership out there as well. Fullback Courtney McLean thinks that O'Neill can finally take the wheel on the road to Offsa. We have a strong team this year. We're really, we're really improving. We've got a great bunch of girls, both junior and senior. Everybody's ready to take it. We've had a bit of bad luck in the past. We had a quarterfinal curse. Last year we made it to semis, lost then, so I mean this is the year we all feel it. The Red Hawks' next game is at home next Monday, the 11th of May, against Clarington Central, set for a 2 p.m. kickoff. In Oshawa, George Wojcic, First Local Sports.